How often do we see this in Vincent? Perfectly good home and garden flattened and replaced with a huge new home or an amorphous clutch of units. And it really is the great challenge of our time, especially if you want to develop. So how do we tread that line where we balance your right to develop with our need to keep everything that is great, green, and beautiful about Vincent. That is where the principles of environmentally sustainable design, ESD, come in. And though you may suspect that this has all been hatched by bureaucrats in an office, this is actually what the community wants and it is taking the world by storm. ESD is helping cities all around the world create communities that are at once livable and healthy. And all of that translates into better, more vibrant, and more highly sought after places for people to live. It can be how we orientate our homes, where we place our windows and shading, the amount of insulation we use, clever design for accessibility and adaptability, and whether we have some funky fruit like a selection of interior and exterior colors and materials, solar panels, gray water, rainwater, and a native and water-wise planting and the retention of beautiful existing trees. When it's all combined, it can give you some extraordinary outcomes. You can have beautiful builds, massive savings in running costs, increase in property value for an ever more discerning market. And behind me is Jimmy's house. Jimmy, tell us a little bit about how you went about designing this amazing space. It's really about challenging the typical way that people approach a battle that's lot. Mm -hmm. And I can see that what we have here is so different from what is normally done. So much is generally lost with battle axe, isn't it? That's the issue. I mean, often character homes are retained, but the backyards get destroyed. So all the trees and canopy coverage, you know, gets replaced with buildings only. So we wanted to change that. And the way that you've designed it, so you are literally taking advantage of your back lane and then the little public open space. That's it. It was really important for us to get a 100% green plot ratio. So there's more courtyards, planted area and open space than the site itself. Tell us a little bit more about the passive solar design of this home. And then secondly, costs. People are always going to be thinking, great idea, but is it going to cost more to build? And what are the running costs? Yeah, and it's a really important question because People might think, oh, I'm going to engage an architect or I've got mm. the council wants me to do all these things, it's going to cost me more in mm. my build, but basic solar passive principles don't need to cost you more. Getting north light you know, into your living spaces, into your, living, into your bedroom spaces, making sure that you can warm up that concrete slab during winter mm. and let it radiate out through the night, that doesn't cost anything except good thinking, yeah. really. And same with um, cross ventilation, really just having single jet spaces that can get operable glazing on two sides means that when there's the breeze you can just control it and bring it all the way through. And then running costs for this versus a typical build that we'd see? Yeah, it's an interesting analysis. I mean, when I talk to my friends um, who live in all sorts of different homes and especially in the studio, we are significantly less than them. And that's the bit that people don't often appreciate is that whilst this might seem onerous to start with, it is going to mean that that house becomes cheaper and cheaper compared with the traditional home that has such high running Absolutely. costs. Absolutely. And electricity prices are going to continue mm -hmm. to increase. Um, everyone feels, feels them going that way at the moment. And here it just means that consistently we've got an even bill at the end of every month and it's a lot less than what other people are paying. The principles of ESD are now part of the city's planning approval process. And by embracing these principles, you can meet the standards recommended. But critically, it's the way that you can learn about some of the key themes, tips and strategies to get the best out of your block and your build. It can literally open up a whole new world of opportunity for you. Yeah. Talk us through what happens when a mum and dad put their development application yeah. in now with these new policies. Yeah, so look, nothing really monumental has changed with the application process. Really it comes down to three things. Okay. So getting in contact early with your designer mm -hmm. about Very important. integrating the fundamentals of ESD into your design. Yep. Secondly, the City of Vincent asks you to submit with your application an ESD template which allows you to demonstrate um, to the City how those principles have been integrated. And thirdly is the submission of a life cycle assessment right. report okay. or a um, suitable alternative which can be discussed with the City. And the principles of ESD are perfect for character homes and major renovations like this one in Mount Hawthorne. 
So a lot of people do buy houses in a place like the city of Vincent because there's these lovely character cottages and homes and a lot of people want to retain and kind of retrofit and renovate those houses and there's lots of things that you can do, really simple things you can do to improve their energy efficiency. Two areas where I would start would be to install some cavity wall insulation and that will make a big difference to your heating loads in particular in winter. Uh, it will also make your house cooler in summer. And then you can look at things like improving the ceiling insulation, maybe retrofitting and upgrading your windows. If you're thinking about doing a more substantial renovation, really important to understand where north is and how to get that winter sun into your house. The north facing sun is also the easier side to shade the sun from in summer, so you can keep the heat out. As you can see with this house we've done in Matlock Street, uh, we actually uh, designed it so that all the windows along the north side boundary could actually capture that winter sun. And uh, we were also able to design that so that we didn't overlook into the neighbor's property. And by working with an existing house, as opposed to demolishing the whole thing and building new, we actually saved the carbon footprint of around 40% compared to a new build. So we've had this house for about 10 years and we really wanted to make it more sustainable than it originally was. So a lot of the old houses are really leaky and drafty. They weren't designed um, for the northern light uh, and that sort of northern aspect and that sort of thing. So one of the first things we did was install insulation, which really made a huge difference. It was such a cold, cold house and now it's really warm, um, basically from that very first step. Yeah, so aside from the insulation, um, <clears throat> obviously exclu excluding drafts is another, uh, another aspect that we addressed. Um, and to do that, door seals and window seals and uh, even the good old fashioned um, door snake that uh, Granny used to use. So we, uh, we got rid of the gas um, in the house, so we got rid of the gas stove and the gas hot water heater. So we've now got an induction cooktop stove, a heat pump uh, hot water heater and we've also got uh, wall panels that are kind of like uh, radiators uh, that heat up um, the rooms. We turn them on during the day, they're um, powered by our solar and um, that's using the, the thermal mass of the house. So um, yeah, Lisa spoke briefly about the, um, uh, the conversion to electric um, and fundamental to that was the installation of the, the photovoltaic cells on the roof and the, uh, and the, and the full solar system for, uh, for running the house. Um, as a result of that, um, all of the electrical appliances that we've got, we run them on timers or on programs and so that they're running through the day when we're generating at a night time, they're not running. We're probably on an annual basis a net uh, exporter of energy and, uh, and certainly cost wise we're probably cost neutral. The reason being that is in winter we're probably a net importer of energy but the rest of the year we're actually exporting energy. So this is our garden, there's lots of birds behind us and we really designed it to attract uh, birds, uh, butterflies and native bees. We've got heaps of bird baths all throughout the garden, we've got a boobalt nest box and we also have an adopt a verge, uh, verge from the city of Vincent which we're really grateful for. In our next video we will explore the process of ESD in action in the city of Vincent and how to navigate the system to get the amazing outcomes such a system promises. All the information you need on developing differently and creating your own inspired infill is on the City of Vincent website.